What's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Bolton, joined by Detective Bolton. Glenn, how are you? I'm good. In today's episode, it's one where I'm going to share an example, but in addition to that, I'm sworn to secrecy. So in terms of sharing the story itself, it's a little difficult for me to be able to do that based on confidentiality that I agreed to. So I'll do my best to share this example. And Clint, you and I have already discussed this, and I think it's important for us to all understand the way that the society as a whole is transitioning in particular of the importance when it comes to first responders and armed service members and the way that we compare the word trauma and the experience of trauma versus other civilians, let's say. And that's not to say that other civilians cannot experience dramatic trauma. Of course they can. But I think it's important for us to kind of share a little bit of this experience to just gain an understanding of the way that our society is beginning to think, in particular, our younger society. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. Now, I'll say I was in a session, and the discussion was around trauma. And I had to intervene several times because my experience in working with people around trauma, trauma being a consequence of something that happened to them, there was a female who also felt the need to interject. And I believe that she did it almost in defiance of what I had to share about my experience working with people with trauma. And what she said completely took me back because took me aback because she's sitting there and said that it's important for us to understand that there are some people in this world who are highly sensitive. And she gave an example. And she said, I could be standing in line getting coffee and there could be somebody who decides to cut in front of me in line. And when you're a highly sensitive person, bam, stab it, Ashley. Some of us, bam, stab it, Ashley, could feel trauma based on that experience. I wanted to slam my laptop shut and ask like, what the fuck did you just say? You're comparing the trauma of an experience of somebody cutting in front of you And you're internalizing that and kind of putting yourself here above me and indicating that that is far more superior because you're highly sensitive versus somebody who had something truly dramatic happen to them and you're comparing the two. It blew my mind. You know, it's something, and it just, it paints that picture of of how people within our society perceive things and, and, it's it's sad. It truly is sad to see people who are affected by something like that compared to the reality of real trauma that's going on in this world of first responders responding to the first on scene of an eight year old who's shot multiple times and they're trying to save it, that that kid's life. Or, yeah, and that's just call number one of the day. Number two is performing CPR on a drowning infant. Number three, like, you know, it goes on and on and on. And I know this to be true for especially busier departments like yours because mm-hmm. I've gone. Yeah, and and it's something that, and, and not trying to demean anyone else's trauma. I mean, there's been people who are involved in a tragic car accident where multiple people die, but they survive. And, and that is a trauma, something response. traumatic, you know, that they would respond to. But it's something that I'm standing in line at Starbucks and someone stands in front of me and it's, that's not, that's not trauma. That's that, you and your feelings, that is, Snowflake. Exactly. And that's something that, you know, it offends you, it upsets you, but that's not trauma. Now, I and I don't see how in any way relevance that you can relate to someone cutting you in line would be a trauma response or how it could be traumatic based off of your previous experiences. You know, I'm, I'm glad that you said that because I, after this call, I was sitting there and I was trying to think because this isn't bashing this individual in particular. The whole point of discussing this is to have an understanding that this is what people are thinking. Like, oh my God, I'm so traumatized. Like, this is what people are relating to trauma. 
And so I was trying to think, like, in what instance could that be a trigger for an actual trauma event that took place? And you you just said it. Like, I couldn't think of a single one. I just thought of one. What? So you're standing in line. Someone cuts you off. They pull out a gun and start shooting everybody in front of you. Right. Like, that would have like, had to have been something. <laughs> I mean, that is definitely something that would create a trauma response onto it. And, and that would be understandably so. Not, not just standing in line, someone cuts in front of you, and then they get their coffee before you. Like, fuck. Yeah. I mean, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's crazy to me to think of, of that, because if that individual truly had that type of traumatic experience, they would not have been as forthcoming and willing to share it in front of an audience of strangers. And they would never, ever have used that as an example in relation to the trauma. I mean, yeah, and, and it kind of goes down into the whole, you know, restroom situation where there's a men's and women's restroom or a unisex restroom and you're inside, say, the women's restroom and, and you're going to the bathroom and, and a dude comes in saying, well, I identify as a female. And then something happens in that instance, like there's been numerous incidents that Ashley would slowly be pulling her gun out of the holster (laughs) but and and say something traumatic happened in that instance then yeah that would be traumatic but if you go to the bathroom and you're a male or a female and a male or female walks into the opposite restroom that they're supposed to but they walk into the one that they identify as that can't be trauma because the way our society has framed it is that's okay now Right. That's trauma for me, not trauma for them. Yeah, exactly. So and it's, it's not trauma. That's more of like an enraged trigger. Right. And that happened to me recently. And, and it's something that how can we format these trauma responses based off of your political views? And, and that's that's the reality behind it is you're seeing people have triggered trauma responses off of a political view and not based off of true trauma. And that's a great point because they truly believe it. This female that was sharing this as an example, she truly believed that that is a trauma response for a highly sensitive individual. Like, I, I, how how many people in this world are highly sensitive? Like, our whole next generation coming up, they are all highly sensitive. And, and, and people like you and I and everybody that we know and surround ourselves with, we wouldn't call them highly sensitive people. This is a, an honest truth. We would call them weak individuals. We would call them weak, not for the sake of like, you're weak, neener, neener. We would call them weak because we know the difference between people who have done the self-work, done the physical work, done the training, who have built up a backbone, who don't fall into the rhetoric of any of this nonsense that everybody else thinks is true when it's really not. And what makes me sad with that is now... You have this this person who explains that as a trauma response. Say from a year from now, something very, very traumatic happens to that person. Like, how are they going to respond in that point? Like, if you see someone cutting you in line as trauma, when something happens to where, you, say you're involved in an active shooter and, and you're there and, and you get shot or the person next to you, whatever it may be, how are you even going to live? And that, that weakness goes parallel with that as an example. Because if you're this weak now, like just wait and see how unfortunate things are going to turn if the inevitable, you know, like a, an unfortunate, we all experience trauma. Eventually it's going to happen. And I'm I'm also thinking about just the, it's crazy to me to think that somebody could be at that stage in their life when they're that I mean, she's not old. She was probably my age. But to be at that stage in your life and to still think that these two are of the same. You know, it really makes me start thinking of the uh, Michael Grossman book on killing and the history behind training soldiers to be killers and to deal with that and, and looking at the statistics going from World War I to World War II and beyond of how the training's been reformatted to make it make people be able to handle 
killing in itself in general, where World War II, there was millions or billions and billions of rounds fired, but a huge majority of their of those were misses. And the be- reason being is because the mental concept is you don't want to shoot that person. You shoot, but you, yeah, you, you don't kill them. And so over time, it's progressively gotten more in-depth training to where these guys are you know, one round, one, one person, like to, to, if you train in that instance to make it okay. And in a war situation, like completely understandable. And so it's reformatted the way that these individuals were trained going through basic and, and everything like that to be comfortable with killing because as a normal human, we don't want to kill. Nobody wants to kill. And it's, Strange to see this mental concept now it's snowballing out into the snow snowy world we live in. Yeah, and before we wrap this up, another thing that's coming up is I remember during all the George Floyd craziness and all the late nights that you had in writing tandem and like all of the, the shit that you had to go through. And I remember creating a post on my main page and It had said something along the lines of, I hope you never understand the fear of having to call 911. And that I think is very, very indicative of this same exact situation where people are just so fortunate to not understand what true trauma is, to not understand, you know, I've been in that situation of feeling, feeling fearful and potentially having my life on on the line because of something that involuntarily happened to me. And that fear of having 911 as your, your only lifeline in a situation like that, I think that because people haven't experienced that type of um, fear and reliance on somebody else, then that's what creates this theory of trauma, this theory of being so highly sensitive. And and you're right. And I think that was a great point that it's it's important to be able to understand that within ourselves if that's truly how we are carrying on and experiencing life and perhaps allowing that to be a reality check that there might be some work that needs to be done on the back end. I hope you've gotten some value out of today's episode. If you have, do us a favor, drop a review, subscribe down below. And as always, know that I'm sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.